Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're going to be creating some dimensional signage topography together. So exactly what you see on screen is what we're going to be creating. I'm going to show you how to create the topography and then depending on whether or not you want a texture behind it or not, the colors will change very slightly. So I want to just make you aware of a couple of things there. This texture is from my Mega Paint Streak pack. It's number 17. So if you have the pack, um, that is this texture. And I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to check those out. Uh, the font that I'm using is a free font. It's called Nova Cento Sans Wide Bold in the normal way. And that is also in the video description. So just click there and then you'll get to everything. I'm going to take you through the colors um, um, and then we're just gonna hop in and get started. So if you are just putting it on a white background, these are some colors that are harmonious that'll work pretty well and look really believable from far away. And the whole point of this tutorial is to seem kind of like signage. So you've got dimensional topography, so it's 3D type. So you've got thickness to your letter, but then you have a long shadow that extends in the opposite direction. And it emanates from behind the letter. So the shadow is cast from where the letter is affixed to a wall versus just coming off this top part right here which makes it seem a little more believable. So I'll show you all the angles so you can get everything right right there. If you're putting it on a white background, this shadow color is the one that I'd suggest versus a darker one over here if you're on a texture. So I'm working in RGB for this just because it's a lot more vibrant on screen for you. So that is what you're seeing over here, the color build. So this is the main letter color right here if you're working on white. This is the three-dimensional aspect. This is the shades of that 3D aspect and then this is the shadow color and then over here everything is the same except for this top color it's a little bit lighter so there's more contrast from the background color right here so this is the color of the actual letters this is still the same exact color for the 3d part and then the shades of the 3d part and then this color is for our shadow but we're applying a multiply blend mode right here so you can kind of see the texture peeking through so it feels more believable okay so we're just gonna jump right in and we will set this type out so i've got e hyphen t here to represent kind of the abbreviation for my website, every-tuesday.com. And block your letters are definitely way easier to start with versus curved letters. So these are really good letters to start with if you're just new to this. So I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard and I'm just gonna put E hyphen T and make these nice and big for you so you can see what's going on here. And once again, the font that I'm using is Nova Cento sans wide and it's in the normal weight right here or you could go to medium too either one is totally fine so i've got the normal weight right here and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to expand this so it's no longer editable text so just a heads up about that so i'm going to go type create outlines and that makes it shapes now instead of editable type so now i'm going to come in here i'm first going to color my letters right here and then we just need to create this dimension so it seems more 3d so it's got that thickness to it so i'm just going to hold all on my keyboard which will make a copy and then just click and drag out until you kind of see a good angle i'm going to keep it right here so it's not too extreme so it still feels believable okay so from here we need to make a copy of this top one right here so all you're going to do is hit command c or control c on a pc to copy it and then you're going to hit command f or control f on a pc to paste it on top so now i've got two of them right here and i've got one right here and i will let you know why i did that in just a second you'll see exactly why so the next thing we're going to do is come over here to our blend tool so just double click on that and when this pops up this is my own personal method. Um, if you have a different method for this, by all means, go ahead. But this is how I do this. So specified steps, I up this pretty high, so I can even go to 75 here. You just want a large number. So when you transition from one to the other, it looks smooth because you have so many copies in between. So then I'm gonna hit okay, and I'm just gonna click once on this top copy, and then click one more time on this bottom copy. And that will create a blend between those two copies. So now what I do, is with it selected, I go object, and if expand is available right here, I hit expand. If it's not, then I hit expand ex appearance, and then I come up here and go expand. And that divides all those individual copies that we just made, those 75 copies, 
it ungroups all of them. So now you can see there's a ton of stuff right here, but now we wanna merge them all together so they become one shape instead of a bunch of copies. So I use the Pathfinder palette to do that. And if you don't have your Pathfinder palette over here, you can get to it by going Window Pathfinder. And then you're just gonna hit this icon right here for Unite. So hit that once, sometimes it'll take a second, and now you've got one shape with that nice smooth transition. And now we're just gonna send this to the back. You can right click, arrange, send it back, or you can hit Command Shift Open Bracket and that will also send it all the way to the back. Nothing looks like it changed, but remember we have this copy. Remember how we had those two copies on top? This is the remaining copy now. We can color this kind of 3D shade right now by coloring it right up here. So now we look like we really have some good dimension going on. So we're gonna save these extra shaded parts for last. So the next thing we're gonna do is just create that shadow that we need. So I'm gonna click on this top copy. I'm gonna hold Alt, click and drag until I hit this position right here from your shadow. Remember how you dragged it down before? You're, you're just gonna drag this copy to the exact same spot. And then you're gonna hold Alt, click and you're gonna drag in the opposite direction. So once you have that, now we're gonna blend these two together and it's fine if they're the same color right now, but if you wanna be able to tell them apart a little easier, you can definitely color them a different color so you can see everything. So then you're just gonna come back over to your blend tool, click on that, click on one copy, click on the other copy, that's gonna blend together. Then you're gonna come back to object, expand, hit okay, and that's going to divide all of them up. And then you're gonna come over here to your Pathfinder, hit the Unite icon, and now they're one shape, and then you can send them to the back. Okay, so that was a lot to get through. I realize I'm going kind of fast, but you can always pause if you need to go back a few steps. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is put in these extra shadow parts on the 3D aspect of our letter just to make it look a little more believable. So what I do is I just come in here with my pen tool. So I hit P on my keyboard. Um, you wanna make sure that your smart guides are on because it'll be a lot easier to kind of snap as you're drawing, especially for blockier letters. It makes the whole process way easier. So if you don't have your smart guides already turned on, definitely do that. So just go view smart guides right here and make sure this is checked. Okay, so I've got my pen tool right here. If you don't have yours on yet, just hit P and it'll be on. And then I'm just gonna click here and it's kind of gonna snap right into the anchor point right there. Click there, click there, there in there and now it's closed and I need to eyedropper that darker color. So now that adds that sh bit of shade right there, that shadow. So now I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard, return and then come to all of these. If it's hard to hit that anchor point, if you feel like you're not hitting the exact spot, just zoom in and you'll be able to see everything and it'll snap a lot easier. So I'm just gonna come all the way around here and finish up doing the rest of these. Okay, and if you're ever unsure where you should be putting these shaded areas, you always wanna consider the direction that your light source is coming from. So since my shadow is going off this left side of the letters, that means my light source is kind of right up here. So anything that's kind of hitting the light rays right here, since this is the underside of the T and the E right here, these ones would be in the shade because these left kind of top sides are what are getting hit by the light rays. So that's just an easier method for thinking about where you need to put those shadows and where the highlights hit. Okay, so we are pretty much done right here. If you wanna add a texture, then just drop it right in here. Once again, this is from my Mega Paint Streak Pack and you wanna make sure it's sent all the way to the back. And then this doesn't look believable right now, but once you apply, let me make this a little bigger here. Once you apply a multiply blend mode to your shadow right here, you can do that coming over here to your transparency palette. You can get to that by going window transparency and you just wanna to toggle this little normal uh, drop down down to multiply and then you can see everything kind of pops off once you do that. So you can see everything really well and the texture's kind of coming through that shadow. If you are not using a texture, I would recommend just keeping it a light color. So whatever color your background is, you just wanna be a little bit different than it and then it'll look more believable as a shadow. So that's how to create dimensional signage typography using Adobe Illustrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design for 
freebies. And once again, all the links to everything mentioned within this video is right in the video description. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next week.